Welcome back. A very quick thing, if you enjoy this video and you want to see more like it, don't forget to click subscribe, ring the little bell next to it. That helps hugely to grow the channel and also means you don't miss any new videos. Anyway, on with this week's topic. We're going a bit left field this week and we are talking about poultry. Today I'm actually talking about a pretty troubling development in livestock health. One that threatens billions of livestock around the planet and by extension the people who depend on them. As many of you know, I'm a farm vet. In practice for me, that means I'm mainly a ruminant vet, so I see cattle, sheep, goats. Occasionally an occupational hazard like a pig or an alpaca will crop up, but really it is those three species and in fact goats are a distant third. So pretty much all my work is cattle and sheep. But there are plenty of vets out there who look after poultry and poultry are found in far greater numbers than ruminants. Worldwide that poultry sector is recognized rightly as vital and that ranges from the highly industrialized and vertically integrated systems we tend to see in countries like the UK and the US, all the way down to sort of more smallholder, more subsistence, more small enterprise poultry farming in lower or middle income countries, which provide often lacking sources of nutrition and income for those communities, especially for women. If you farm or keep poultry in the UK, you'll likely be familiar with the seasonal threat of bird flu avian influenza officially. The influenza virus which causes flu is a quite diverse clan of viruses that infects many, many different species. For this particular strain of the flu virus, the natural reservoir, i.e. the population it tends to stay in without affecting them too badly, is wild waterfowl, at least as far as we're aware. The one we're talking about today is classed as a highly pathogenic avian influenza as opposed to a low pathogenic avian influenza, HPAI for short. It is also classified as an H5N1. Those H and N you see in front of the flu virus refer to the different proteins that are present on the virus's surface. I said that the natural reservoir appears to be wild waterfowl. Now many of those species are migratory, moving into or across the UK over the autumn and winter. This fact combined with the improved survival of the virus at cooler temperatures means there has traditionally been a seasonal pattern to avian influenza in both wild and domestic bird populations in the UK. We tend to see outbreaks starting in the autumn, carrying on through the winter and then fizzling out in the spring. Although we have seen other HPAIs, this H5N1 was only discovered in 1996 and since the 2000s there has been a sustained spread in wild bird populations. These seasonal outbreaks are troublesome in themselves but over the last couple of years, the virus hasn't been reading the textbook on this seasonal pattern. After the winter of 2020, 2021, those winter infections never really fizzled out and carried on through the summer of 2021. The winter of 21, 22 was a bumper season for bird flu outbreaks as well. All of this culminated in 2021 being the worst year on record in the UK for avian influenza outbreaks. And poultry keepers in the UK were issued with a housing order, which which required them to keep their birds inside from November all the way through to May. Even if you aren't involved in the poultry sector or farming at all, you will have seen this issue crop up in national discussion. Whether that's the sudden disappearance of free range eggs from the shelf because free range producers had to house their birds for so long, they lost their free range status, to the swathes of dead gannets and other seabirds confronting visitors to Britain's coast and countryside on their summer holidays. And if you thought we might be due some respite, Infections in 2022 appear to be tracking about six weeks ahead of 2021. So it looks like last year's record is going to be broken with some ease. As the weather in the UK inevitably cools off after a very mild autumn and those migratory birds start to get moving, expect things to get worse. DEFRA's agency for this sort of thing, the Animal and Plant Health Agency or APHA, has this week put in another mandatory housing order which requires all all poultry keepers to keep their birds inside. Effectively an indefinite poultry lockdown and they have been scrambling to second and train vets in practice to deal with this tsunami of bird flu outbreaks. The Financial Times reported that 40% of free-range turkeys along with a host of 
other poultry have been wiped out so far, threatening that festive supply. But we know it's not just about Christmas dinner. Those numbers represent misery for scores of farmers. Financial difficulties for those employed in the poultry sector, whether they are employed as producers, as processors, as retailers, plus the waste of a year's hard graft and stockmanship. And perhaps most of all, although many of us clearly are comfortable with killing animals for food, seeing those animals never reach the food chain to be culled, even if we know it's the right thing to do to stop infection spreading, is often hard to bear, hard to witness. And the UK is definitely not alone. It's a similar story across Europe and across North America. In the US, there had only been two previous outbreaks of HPAI in wild birds, one in 2014 and one in 2016. To quote some of their scientists, after that the virus just seemed to disappear. It doesn't look like it's disappearing now. So why has the virus suddenly become a lot more prevalent and a lot more sticky? Bad news again, we don't know. Ideas being mooted at the moment include mutations that allow the virus to survive for longer in the environment, or mutations that allow it to infect a broader range of bird species than it could before. And that leads on to the very scary elephant in the room. At the moment, it doesn't appear to jump or spill over into human populations very readily at all. There have been some cases, but they are rare. Unfortunately, viruses are subject to the same laws of natural selection that all living things are. Take the swine flu pandemic of 2009. That was an H1N1 flu virus, actually a reassortment of pig, bird, and human influenzas. That caused thousands of deaths in that 2009 pandemic. And the Center for Infectious Disease Research and Policy estimated that it infected between 11 and 21% of the global population, i.e. somewhere between 700 million and 1.4 billion. So are there any rays of hope as some of you will know, I am an optimist, but you have to look pretty hard and with very rose-tinted specks to find them here. I suppose if you farm red meat species like cattle, sheep, pigs, then you might see a stronger than usual Christmas uplift if Christmas poultry supplies are disrupted. Likewise, if you're a poultry producer that can make it through these nail-biting months to December, you may also see that benefit if you avoid a cull. But no farmer I know would rub their hands at the prospect of making a few extra quid when there's such abject misery being dealt to other farmers by either infectious disease, the environment, the markets, not least because they know it could easily have been them or will be them next. There is a vaccine for bird flu, but it's not particularly good and it can interfere with some of the diagnostics for the disease, i.e. telling if a certain flock has bird flu or not. So this vaccine isn't currently used in Britain. One small upside may be that these outbreaks will turbocharge some more research into developing a better vaccine for birds. If you're a backyard poultry keeper, we'll go over some of the basics about how you can A, stop your flock getting infected and B, stopping infecting other flocks by and with bird flu in the near future. Because if one thing's for certain, this isn't going away anytime soon. On that grim note, that's it for now. Remember, if you want to see some more of these new technicals, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave me a comment. Otherwise, I will see you next time.